Captain Dan here, Goober Time Guide Service, and we're gonna teach you how to tie one of the simplest and most effective catfish rigs you could possibly use. And it's also effective for a lot of other species as well. Now the rig we're talking about is the Santee Cooper rig. This is something I like to use when I'm on anchor fishing, fishing cup bait on the bottom, or even when I'm dragging baits. So let's head on over to the workbench and see what this rig's all about. Now for the Santee Cooper rig, I'm gonna use some 100 pound clear slime line for my leader line. I'm gonna use a 10 up bounty circle hook. This is from a company called Mid Atlantic Catfish Company. And all the products we're using right here are linked in the description down below, so make sure you check that out. This hook has a nice offset on it, meaning the hook comes out to the side a little bit. It's not perfectly in line with the shank and a nice octopus, meaning that eyelet tilts backwards for us. It also has a really nice gap. I can fit my thumb all the way through it, which is gonna help me put some nice cup bait on there and bottom fish for catfish or whatever species you might be interested in chasing. Now, one of the key components to a Santee Cooper rig that makes it stand apart from Carolina rig, which we did in our last video, is some kind of float and the float's gonna get your hook up off the bottom. I really like these EVA floats from Mid-Atlantic Catfish Company. They've got some small ones and some big fat jumbos. For this rig, I'm gonna use a big fat jumbo and look how cool that camouflage is. It's in goober green. These floats are just about indestructible. The only way you've gotta replace them is if you lose the whole entire rig because you're not gonna bust these up like you do with those styrofoam floats. These things are great. We're also gonna need a size H crimp to help us finish off our rig. You could tie your rigs up if you prefer not to use crimps. I do, and I'm gonna use this crimper tool right here. However, if you don't want to, we do have videos on the improved clinch knot, the Palomar knot, and the no knot snell, which we're gonna use in this video. That's the only knot we're actually gonna tie in this video. So let's get into it. Now, I'm not saying you have to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and write a comment down below, but my sources tell me that if you don't, the next time you're reeling in a giant fish, the handle on your rod's gonna fall off and you're not gonna be able to land that fish. So if I were you, I wouldn't risk it. Go take care of those three things right now. It really helps the channel out, and we appreciate your support. To start, we're gonna take our leader line and pull off a big old chunk of it and I've got a tape measure along the front edge of my workbench here down underneath on the lip so I can really measure these out and make them pretty exact. So for this rig I'm going to measure out about 35 inches and snip that off with my nail clippers. We're going to take our circle hook of choice and we're going to come in from the front. The front means where the point is that side of the eyelet. So come in from the front and hold that leader line down along the shank. I like to stop right where it starts to curve in. Hold that together with the shank of the hook. And I do this really fast in another video link down below if you want to see a better video of this all. We're going to do about six wraps. Three, four, five, six. And we're going to finish on the back side there. That's going to leave a nice tight weave for us. And from the back side, we're going to take our tag in, the other end of our leader line, come out the back of the hook towards the front and pull that up nice and tight. I know there's no official knot here, but I've never had one of these let loose. This is a great knot and it's fast to tie. Believe it or not, snelling that circle hook right there took up about five inches off our line. So we're down around the 30 inch, 29 inch mark right here. For the next step, you wanna take your float and pull the peg out and now take your line and run it through the center of your float. Pop it out the other side. For the Santee Cooper rig, the key is you wanna have the float pretty close to the hook. I leave it about a fist away. You can go ahead and lock that in place by putting your peg back into the hole, nice and tight. That's not gonna go anywhere, unless you want it to. You can slide it up and down your rig, no problem. So you can adjust it on the fly and experiment with it. At this point, you wanna think about the other end of your rig that's gonna tie up to your main line. You could use a barrel swivel like this. Either way, if you're gonna crimp, you wanna put the sleeve on first, go through once, leave a little bit hanging out. If you're gonna use a swivel, you can put it on now before you run your leader line back through the sleeve. And that's gonna make a little loop right there that your swivel can hang in. Personally, I don't like this method. I've got a different rigging system and I do use a barrel swivel, but it's in a different section of my rig. So I'm actually gonna come through the sleeve and go right back in, leave a little bit of tag end sticking out and just leave a little loop right there about the size of a fingernail and start to crimp that up. I'm gonna do two crimps here, one at the top of the sleeve. I'm gonna slide down and do another towards the bottom. And I'll tell you, I was skeptical about crimps when I first started thinking about switching over to them, but since I have, I don't think I'm going back. It really helps you control the length of your rig and I've never had one even slip on me. Those things are tight as could be. And there you have it. You've got a really simple Santee Cooper rig that's gonna catch you a ton of fish if you use it the right way. Now that you have your Santee Cooper rig tied and complete, we just have to worry about attaching it to our main line. We're gonna represent our main line by this yellow line right here going back to our rod tip. What I like to do is use a sinker slide, Put my main line through that. I like to use a soft silicone bead next to protect my knot. 
And at this point, you might want to go to a swivel. I prefer to go to a swivel that has a clasp on the end. So I'm going to tie a quick improved clinch knot here. And we do have an entire video on how to tie this knot. So I know this is fast, but if you want to go back and watch the full length video on that, we do have it on our channel and it's linked in the description down below. Now you're going to take your snap swivel and connect your leader line through the loop right to the snap. And then we've got a complete setup right there. This rig is really versatile. You can fish it on anchor by taking some kind of lead sinker and connecting it. Once it's on bottom, the rig can slip through the sinker slide to make sure that a fish can't detect your weight and be spooked. You can also take this off really quickly and throw on a drifting sinker, a dragging weight, whatever you want to call it. And then you can start using some different fishing tactics like dragging baits. Using this rig in combination with anchoring and drifting is a surefire way to put some fish in the boat. Now, if you're not quite ready to trust the crimp, I highly recommend checking out our rigging videos about tying knots, which are linked down in the description below. And either way, this video is over, so make sure you go check out our one on the no knot snow. Thanks for watching.